apologize in advance for some of the poor lighting and I'm trying to fix this up. This isn't where I normally film. It's the basement of my garage. But my air compressor died. I flipped the switch and uh, it groaned and it didn't come off and then it tripped the breaker. So I come down here to investigate and the first thing you check for is make sure you got voltage the whole way up. Which I have power all the way to the back of the motor. Now you might be thinking, well, doesn't that mean you need a new motor? Well, not necessarily. That motor right there, the Ingersoll ran is about $250. But what I did see was underneath these caps, or this side in particular, was this uh, whitish substance coming down out. And that, my friends, is where my starting capacitors were. And I'll go over what a starting capacitor is here in a little bit. But basically, it just gives your electric motor a little push whenever it's time to start. Uh, without it, you can uh, your motor uh, may or may not be able to actually get rotating. And the more it rotates, of course, the more strength it builds, the faster it goes. This just helps it overcome that. It's kind of like downshifting a gear. Starting out in first gear instead of sixth gear. But anyways, I'm going to have to put this light down for a moment. I already took the cover off, took the capacitor out. I'll show you that in a minute. Or right here it is. Let me get the light up over here. And well, that's a little too bright. Let me see here. And you can see most likely whenever you have uh, any kind of leakage around this, that means it's no good. And if you have a blowout here, now I've already removed this one, I've already checked it, and it had no voltage, so I just went ahead and pulled it off. This resistor should remove any remaining electric current, but before you touch anything electrical, always make sure that you verify that it is, in fact, dead. But I took this one off, and I'm going to go over uh, a couple of steps on how to replace them. And see if I can save myself about $200. This capacitor, I mean, depending on the size of the motor, this is a pretty good size motor. These capacitors are about $15 a piece. I bought new uh, resistors. The resistors were about $0.06 cents a piece, but I had to buy a pack of 100 of them. So I can do this 50 more times. But it's cheaper than a motor. So let's get to it. Now one other thing I did forget to cover on my previous segment was the fact that there was a switch inside the motor and that motor if what I'm remembering right could also that switch could also be bad my dog's winding upstairs because he doesn't want to come downstairs because he's scared but basically to check it and I apologize I'm doing this one-handed all you have to do is set your multimeter to ohms and then check for continuity between these two switches while it, these two wires while it's in the off position. Let's see if I can get them both. And there it is. We have continuity. No, they're not touching. You can see air between them. Okay, so my switch should be good. Okay, let's move this upstairs where I can do some soldering. And I'm going to do both sides, so I figured... Now would be a good time to show you. This is how they kind of lay in there. Uh, if your capacitor, well, I'll go over that in a minute, but I've already verified that there is, in fact, no electrical current, no voltage in there with my trusty little multimeter set to volts AC. So all you got to do is kind of pop that sucker out of there and take off those two leads. Don't worry about marking them. That doesn't matter which side's which. Uh, it just it just provides power in and out. Okay, we're moving on. All right, I'm gonna admit I'm not perfect, and by being not perfect, I do make mistakes. But I don't think it should hurt too bad in this case. In this instance, I figured both of these capacitors were identical, which they're not. Uh, I don't claim to be a master electrician, but. Here's the one that went bad, and luckily I was going to replace them both, so I ordered two of the same capacitor, because I figured both sides were the same, when in fact they are not. What you want to do, what you want to know whenever you're shopping for a capacitor, let's see if I get this in here, it's basically two things. 
your voltage 250 volts AC and this UF thing which for me uh, when I shop for these ones it said on the old one matter of fact it does so I'll show you that it shows on the old one 233 to 280 I found one that said uh, 233 to 279.5 I figured that was close enough but whenever it came it in fact does say 233 to 280 oh and 60 hertz 50 60 hertz um, but yeah this will replace the bad one once I solder on a new resistor but this one is uh, off the other side of the motor and it's completely well, it's not completely, completely different, but it's it's 370 volts AC. So, but I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. So we're just going to put this one back in. And if that doesn't work, I'll order another one. And there'll be another installment of this video series. But for right now, we're just going to solder a resistor onto this guy. Put him on. Put this one back. Throw this one dispose of it properly, get rid of it, and see if that doesn't cure up our problem of the fact that my compressor doesn't work. Because when your compressor doesn't work, any true um, professional mechanic will tell you that uh, the compressor is basically the heart of his shop, and right now my heart is in, my, my shop is in cardiac arrest. Alright, let's get the soldering. Oh, one other thing. This didn't come from a master car, it's just in a master car bag. Uh, this is the minimum quantity of resistors I could buy. It was six dollars on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> so it's about six cents a resistor. And now I have enough resistors to change this capacitor 99 more times. It's crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of them. So I'm on eBay. 99 resistors. Five dollars and ninety-four cents. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the size and shapes of things real quick. I just got done. Um, oh, I want that focus. Focus, focus, focus. Anyway, I just got done soldering that on, and. Let's see if I can get my camera to... Hold on, I'm going to retry this. Alright. Let's talk about the sizes and shapes of things. Um, your new capacitor could be slightly longer, slightly larger, slightly shorter than the old one. But like I said, as long as these ratings are the same, uh, it'll function the same, act the same, smell the same, taste the same. Just as long as it fits underneath that cover on your motor is all you really need to worry about. Now, for the resistor, I don't know if you can tell side by side. Yeah, you can see it there. The resistors overall are two different sizes, and the body of them are two different colors. Now, what does that mean? Well, honestly, absolutely nothing, because what you do with the resistor is you go by the banding. Which, on this one, you start at one the side, I think it's opposite the either gold or silver. And then each color represents something else. Like, I think brown's one. If I remember correctly, brown's one, green's five, and yellow's zero. I don't know, yellow's three. Brown one, green five, yellow's three. Now, yellow, that doesn't mean 153. What that means is you go 1 and 5 for 15, and then 3 are the number of zeros after the 15. So you have a 15,000 ohm or 15K resistor. Okay, so it's brown, green, yellow, gold. And this one here is brown, green, yellow, gold. Uh, I'll be it in the opposite direction, but it's a resistor. It doesn't matter which way the current flows through it. It just uh, slows it down. So uh, there's no wrong way to connect it. There's also no wrong way really to wire this side of the capacitor up. But, you know, make sure you do it well. Uh, there's my soldering job. 
I'll have to show you guys another video on soldering some other time because I don't have a stand to put this on so that I can sit there and film while I'm working because I'm poor. But if I did this correctly and my guesstimations are correct, I should be able to save myself a little over $200. Then I probably could have saved myself $220 if I would have realized that that one was different than these ones. But, live and learn. And I don't think there's anything actually wrong with it. I was just going to change it because, well, I was working on it. Well, that escalated quickly. Um, that did not work. And after doing some research, I figured out that uh, if your motor hums but won't start, it's most likely the capacitor. Now, I'm not going to admit that this one wasn't blown, but it may not be all of my problem at this point. It's probably, it's definitely a contributing factor, I think, but it wasn't the whole thing. But the motor is free. So, we're going to take a look. Like I said, I have verified that I do have 120 volts coming in on each one of these two circuits so and I have 120 volts here and here so I think the problems between and I get um, 120 volts on either side here but why this motor is not starting or even humming I think we're gonna find out because I mean if I gotta buy a motor I gotta buy a motor I mean this is definitely a worthwhile experiment to see what happens it you know, not every situation turns out ideally, but we're at the point now where the worst we can do is fix it. I was going to take it off anyway to get this pulley off, because I'm pretty sure a new motor's not going to come with a pulley, and, you know, it had to come off to install the new motor. So at this point, all we're going to do right now is maybe fix it. So let's see what we can find. Alright, I got her apart. And I can't find anything wrong. All the continuity tests I could do. Um, the switches are all good. Nothing's burning up. There's no uh, no signs of anything where I let the smoke out. There doesn't seem to be any bad components. If you're wondering what this is, or sorry, this is, this is not rust, this is... Uh, Residue from when I painted the car, but I mean everything seems to fit and finish nice. It's a brushless motor, so there shouldn't be anything involved there. I just really cannot figure it out. And then I had an idea. There's voltage and then there's amperage, which equals wattage. Volts times amps equal watts. And if you're missing any component of that, you lose wattage. So what I'm thinking is, that's the switch for my compressor. Yes, I mounted it insanely high, but there was a reason for that, and that was so the kids couldn't get to it. But um, I'm wondering if the contacts somewhere between this fuse box, where it goes all the way down to the compressor, maybe are making enough contacts to give me a voltage reading but not enough to make, to give enough amperage to turn this. So I'm going to conduct a little experiment because I really, 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 here, here's my thing. I really want to know what's wrong before I go out and buy a motor because there'd be nothing worse than buying a brand new $250 motor only to find out that the motor you had wasn't the problem. Anyway, so I'm going to put this sucker all back together. And then I'm going to wire it into another power source and see if it turns on then. And then if it does, I know my problem is somewhere between the compressor and the fuse panel. Whether it's the uh, breaker itself has gone bad, or more than likely, I'm going to say it's, if it's anything, I'm going to almost guess it's going to be that switch. Uh, whenever I turned it on, 
and it didn't, it kind of went, whoop, whoop, and it died. So, and there was a, there was a small flash out of there. So that's telling me that this sucker might not be getting enough power, enough amperage. Does that make sense? It, it's kind of like, uh, like torque times RPM equals horsepower. You can have all the horsepower in the world, but if you don't have enough torque, you can't get moving. That's why a lot of like uh, your land speed cars need a push start. They don't. They don't actually generate enough torque with the gearing they have to move themselves. Your amperage is like your torque. Your voltage is your RPM. And your wattage is your overall horsepower rating. So right now, if we're, if we're short, we can have uh, voltage, which is, you know, free spin into a million RPM. But if we don't have any torque to the equation, we don't have any horsepower. Hence, no turn to motor. I hope this is making sense to some of you. It's the best way I can think of to explain it being a gearhead. Torque and amperage are what moves stuff. So I'm thinking I'm losing amperage. So I'm going to wire this into another 240 power voltage source and see if it turns on. Okay. Alright. Do not do this at home. Whatever you think. Don't do this. <laughs> the concept works, but I really don't recommend some of the safety in it. So I'm not even going to go over how this is wired up. Just take, for example, that it is wired into this 240 volt 50 amp outlet, there is the motor, and here we go, I just unplugged it, and I'm plugging it back in, ready, go, and it's off, <laughs> well, there you have it. The problem is not in the motor. It is somewhere over by that fuse box. Or in the wire between the fuse box and the compressor. I have determined this. So now we'll see what we can jump out of the way to get it working again. Alrighty. Alright. I got a brand new switch installed reinstalled the motor now you can tell it's a brand new switch because if you look at the earlier portions of this video that switch was white now it's brown power turn back on to the circuit breaker let's see oh, sorry a lot of junk in the way because i was working over here let's see what happens one two three go <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I can hear air coming on. Woohoo! The compressor is running. See, I'm starting to build a little pressure. Awesome sauce! You can hear better over here. That's uh, that's why that compressor is where it is, so you can actually talk and carry on a conversation up here while the compressor is running. So, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, that is a wrap on this project.